Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be continuing with our beginner level character course on how to create this little monster game character in Blender and then export it into the Unity game engine. In this sixth installment, we'll be building a simple custom rig that imports into Unity and aligns with the game engine's default avatar mapping system. Once you configure your rig with this built-in avatar system, Unity can better understand your character's bone structure and allow you to animate and control the range of motion of different bones easily. As I mentioned before, this course is a nine-part series on a game character workflow We'll be picking up for the end of part five here. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, let's get started by adding in the bone structure. Same as with other objects. Shift A, then to armature, then to single bone. Over to the rig properties tab, expand the viewport display area and tick the in front box to have the bones always visible. This makes it easier to align them with our model. Now S to scale, then G and Z to move it down to the pelvic area to start with the hip bone. Now I'm gonna to switch to edit mode. And then selecting here on the top end of the hip bone, press E to extrude another bone straight up like this to form the spine bone. Then again, E to extrude up all the way to the top of the model for the head bone. Now select the bottom end of the hip bones, E then Z to extrude straight down. Now Alt P and select Disconnect Bone. G to move to the side and align with the thigh. E to extrude down for the shin. Numpad 3 for side view. E to extrude for the foot. Then E again to extrude the toe bone. Now I'm gonna select the top of the spine bone here. Then E and X to extrude to the side. Then select the bone, Alt P and disconnect bone. G to move to the shoulder area. You should see this dotted line here. This means the two bones are parented, which is important to rigging as it affects how their movements influence each other. Okay, now E to extrude the forearm bone, then again for the hand bone. R to rotate and align with the arm. Now selecting the hand bone, E to extrude, Alt P and disconnect and then R to rotate the thumb bone into place. Selecting the thumb bone, then Shift D to duplicate, and R and G to move into place for the other two fingers. Now let's select all three fingers, right mouse button, then select Subdivide. Now we have another bone so that the fingers can bend a little bit. Now let's select the top of the head bone, E to extrude up, Alt P and disconnect bone, numpad three for side view, then R to rotate and place it over one of the eyes. Then again, extrude a bone out of the top of the head, Alt P and disconnect it, R to rotate and place it along the bottom of the jaw. You may have noticed we don't have the dotted line between the hip bone and the thigh bone, and that's because they aren't properly parented. So let's select the thigh bone, then over on the bone menu on the right, under the relations area, click on the parent field here and then select bone. You should now see a dotted line between the two of them like this, which tells Blender and Unity that the legs are attached to the hips. Okay, for file organization, let's rename the bones so they aren't all bone.001, 002, and so on. Select the first bone, and over on the right in the bone menu, rename it to hip. Then the next one, spine. This big one, let's name it head. Then eye. Then jaw. Now over to the arm, let's name this upper arm, then lower arm, then hand. Now for the thumb, I'm gonna call the base of the thumb, thumb prox for proximal, the more technical term for the bones in our fingers, and the end of the thumb, thumb int for intermediate. I'm just gonna do two joints here, you could do three if you'd like. Then the others, index prox, index int, pinky prox, pinky int. Okay, now onto the leg. Let's name these thigh, shin, foot, 
and toe. So that Blender and Unity know which side of the character is which, we need to add a suffix for left and right to each bone's name. You can do this quickly by selecting all the bones that need to be mirrored over to the other side, then right click, select names, then auto name left right. You'll see on the right hand side there, toe changed to toe.l, denoting it as the left toe bone. To mirror them over to the side quickly, right click and select symmetrize. Okay, with that done, let's set up the IK or inverse kinematic system for the arm. I'm gonna select the rig, tab into edit mode, then up here in the right, I'm gonna click on the X symmetry button. This will make it so that any changes we make here will be mirrored over to the other side. Let's click on the elbow joint here, then move it back ever so slightly so that there's a slight bend in it like a normal elbow functions. Now let's E to extrude a bone out. Alt P and select clear parent this time and move it back a bit like this. Now over on the right, I'm gonna change the name to elbow IK dot L. Now select the hand dot L bone, shift D to duplicate, Alt P and clear parent and rename it to hand IK dot L. Now let's select the lower arm bone and switch to pose mode. Then over in the Bone Constraints tab on the right, let's add in a Inverse Kinematics Constraint. Under Target, select Armature. Under Bone, select Hand IK.L. For Pole Target, select Armature again. Then for the second bone field, select Elbow IK.L. The armature goes a little bit crazy here. To fix this, change the pole angle to 90 and the chain length to 2. Now if you select your hand IK bone and move it around with G, it should move like this. If it bends the wrong way, make sure to go back and make the little bend in the elbow. Okay, now select hand.L, not hand IK.L. And in the bone constraints tab, add a copy rotation constraint. Then for target, select armature. For bone, select hand IK.L. Now when you move the hand IK bone and rotate it, the hand will bend at the wrist. Okay, now let's set up the IK system for the leg. It's going to be the same as the arm. I'm going to select the rig, tab into edit mode, click on the knee joint here, E to extrude a bone out, Alt P and select clear parent this time, and then move it forward like this. Now over on the right, I'm going to change the name to knee ik.l. Now select the foot.l bone. Shift D to duplicate. Alt P and clear parent. And rename it to foot ik.l. Now let's select the shin bone. Switch to pose mode. Then over in the bone constraints tab on the right. Let's add in a inverse kinematics constraint. Under target, select armature, bone, select foot ik.l. For pole target, select armature again. Then for bone, knee ik.l. The armature goes a little crazy again. To fix this, change the pole angle to 90 and the chain length to two. Okay, now you can select foot.l not foot.r or foot ik.l. And in the bone constraints tab, add a copy rotation constraint. Then for target, select armature. For bone, select foot ik.l. I forgot to do this earlier, so let's add in a little slight bend in the knee like this. Now when you move the foot ik bone and move it around, the leg should behave somewhat like a real leg does and also bend and rotate at the ankle. Okay, let's add in some finger rotation. I'm gonna select the end of the thumb here. Then in the bone constraints menu, let's add a copy rotation constraint, target armature. For the bone field, select the next bone up in the chain towards the hand. I only have two bones here, but if you have three, select whatever bone is next. In my case, it's thumbprox.l. Now for the axis, I'm gonna select X, then target, local space, and owner, also local space. Now when you select and rotate the thumb prox bone, the tip of the thumb should also follow. Now you can repeat the same process for the other two fingers. 
select the end of the index here, then in the bone constraints menu, add a copy rotation constraint, target armature, for the bone field, selecting the next bone up in the chain towards the hand. Axis, I'm gonna select X, target, local space, and owner, also local space. And then again, just for the pinky. For the eyes, I'm gonna keep it really simple here. I'm just gonna select one of the eyes. In my case, I'll select I.R and add a copy rotation constraint, then target armature. And for bone, I'm just gonna pick the other eye, which is I.L. Okay, now we gotta do some cleanup on the bone names and constraints as the stuff on the other side isn't perfect. If I select the elbow IK bone over on the right side, you can see it's named upper arm.001. This is true for the other IK bones on this side as well. So I'm gonna go through and rename them appropriately and with the dot R suffix as well. So elbow IK dot R, knee IK dot R, hand IK dot R, and foot ik.r. I'm also gonna go through and uncheck the deform box for each of these ik bones as well, for both the left and right sides. Do it for only the ik bones and not the other bones. Another thing we need to do is mirror over the bone constraints, which are denoted by the yellow and green colors on the bones here. To mirror over the constraints, select the bone without the constraints, then shift select the bone with the constraints you want to copy over. Then in pose mode, go to the bone menu and select constraints, then copy constraints to selected bone. This flips it awkwardly. To fix this over on the right, change all of the dot L bone references to dot R. Now just repeat for the other colored bones, selecting the hand dot R bone first, then shift selecting the hand dot L bone second, going to the bone menu, copy constraints to selected bone, then switching the dot L bone reference to the matching dot R one. Remember, select the bone you want to copy the constraints to first, then shift select the bone with the constraints on it already second. Now onto the shin bones. And then finally onto the foot IK bones. Okay, now I'm gonna get a little fancy here and do some custom bone shapes for our IK bones. These will help when we go to animate our character as it gives us a clear indication of where our IK handles are. We'll use empties for the custom shapes here, which are just reference objects that do not render. So over on the right layer panel, I'm gonna right click and create a new collection and call it bone controllers. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna hide the model for a second. Now shift A and add an empty. I'm gonna go with a sphere for the first one. I'm gonna rename it controller hand over on the right. Then adding another empty, this time a different shape. I'm gonna go with a plane axis this time and name it controller feet. And then finally adding one more empty, this time a cube and calling it controller head. Okay, with those added, let's select our armature again. And then go to the bone menu on the right, then down to the viewport display. And under the custom shape area, let's select our new controller hand empty. Make sure you first select the object you want to be replaced with the empty. So I'm going to select the hand ik.l bone. Then to custom object, then select the controller hand empty from the list. And now you can see our hand ik bone is now a different shape, making it easier to see and select later when we animate. 
Repeat this process for the foot IK. I'm going to replace the foot IK bone with the plain axes empty I added earlier. And then again, I'm going to select the head bone here and replace it with the cube shape. It's a little big, so to fix this, just adjust the scale parameter over on the right to your liking. To further enhance our new bone shapes, let's assign some different colors to make them even easier to see and differentiate. So select a controller, then to the Rig Properties tab, under Bone Groups, click the little plus icon. I'm going to rename it Controller Left. Then here I'll change the color to red. Then click Assign. Now our custom shape is red. I'll click on the left foot IK bone and also assign it to red. Now selecting the foot IK.R bone, then clicking the plus icon again on the right, naming it Controller Right, and changing the color to blue. Then clicking Assign. Then again for the hand IK.R bone and repeating the process to turn the middle head controller shape to yellow. Now our custom controller shapes on the left are all colored red, and on the right they are all blue, and the middle is yellow. Again, this will make it easier for us to differentiate which side is which when we're animating our character. Okay, finally, let's attach our rig to our character. First, select all the components of your character on the right or in the viewport. Then shift select the rig last. Then press Ctrl P and select Automatic Weights. Now you can select your rig, switch into Pose Mode, select your custom controller shape, move it around, and your model should hopefully move with it. Now we can see that as we move and rotate the rig around, our guy is looking a little rough. There are some pretty weird deformations going on that don't look all that good. This is because Blender's automatic weighting, although it's a great start, is not perfect and often requires a little bit of manual adjustment, which we'll cover in the next video. So that's it for this one. Hopefully you have a model that looks something like this. Doesn't look the best right now, I'll admit, but our character is moving. So I'm going to pull out my trusty to-do list and call part 6 done. In the next video in part 7, we're going to do some manual weight painting and shape keys to clean up the deformations and make our animation look a little bit cleaner. A couple of shoutouts this week. Shout out to Sir Doron on Instagram, who through the use of the bear tutorial, sculpted this awesome fox. Got some great smooth shapes, and I love how the gradient node really works here. And to Rack Garcia on Instagram, who celebrated Earth Day a little bit early with this great spin on the bear tutorial. Poor guy, save the whales. Thanks for the shoutouts, guys. If you'd like to be featured here, just tag me somewhere, and I'll put you in my next video. Feel free to ask questions below, I try and answer all of them, and sometimes, I actually help. If you want to share your art or ask a question, I have a little group on Facebook going, link is below. Or you can just hit me up on social media somewhere, I love seeing your guys' stuff. I have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Twitch, Gumroad, and Udemy as well. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.